All right. Yeah. So anyway, Gaza, Gaza Strip. <laughs> Gaza, Gaza Strip. <laughs> yeah. Do we like uh, the Gaza Strip? Sounds like a really fancy mall. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it does. It, out of context. Yeah, you know? that's the only one that has a Lululemon in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that sounds like a grenade or something. Yeah. <laughs> Lulu, yeah, Lululemon sounds like an old time bomb. Yeah, like some kind of yeah. uh, mine. That yeah, Grandpa Joe here. lost his leg in the wall due to a Lululemon. <laughs> he stepped on a Lululemon. <laughs> yeah. He was never the same. Uh, Oh man, war no good. Yeah. Um I'm watching Band of Brothers. This is how soft I am. Okay. Uh my reference for war. Yeah. I've always known it existed, but uh Band of Brothers, have you ever seen it? Um It was made by like It was like it came out with Spielberg what? and Tom Hanks and Yeah, it was that. like it was after uh it was a long Private time ago. Ryan. After after Saving Private Ryan. Yes. It came out. So like It's like a 9-hour Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And uh, better though, a little more gritty. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a mini series on HBO, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Those dudes, um, brave. I would say brave. Uh, and you like you watch that, and I was also watching some old Sopranos episodes. Yeah, and it's funny because it's like Tony Soprano complaining about. He's like. I'm stressed out because of this situation. And then you switch over to Band of Brothers. Oh yeah, and they're like in a hole being. <laughs> bombed just, just from like with... artillery and stuff <laughs> yeah. and you're like i think nobody should be complaining <laughs> yeah you know? I, and i've never i've never really been one to really think it, about it that hard but uh yeah you know man it's wild yeah it's a, I, I mean it's it's interesting i i always like like bec- i have a long history of like g- jumping into situations where i probably shouldn't you know, like security. And yeah, the security the stuff, Regency all the fights Mall. and like um, or even fights off the clock where I'm not on security. Time, yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, or like like there's been times uh, where like I, t- I think I've told a story about me pulling a woman out of a car on, on a, an accident on a way to a show. Like literally pulled her out, had to do CPR and then had to have people help me because at that point I was like I was like winded. I was like, yeah, trying to do the breaths. And, and I had a, she was a heavy girl. I had to pull her out. And all that. But like, <laughs> I know it sounds fucked up, but like, yeah, he took all my breath out of me. Um, no, but it's like six breaths is one. Yeah, yeah, one fill up. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Black- that's I blacked uh, out on her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like she was like, I don't need mouth to mouth. I need snacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it. Her sugars was low. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> you pulled her out of an ice cream truck. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to get a <laughs> rocky road for myself. <laughs> no, but like I've, I've I've had this history of like you know being in, in situations that other people are like whoa, but that it, like in in comparison to like Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan and those those type of things like that's that's intense. But I know me like I, I it's just, I guess the scary thing about it is like I remember when I came uh, graduated high school um, I I had a long talk with my dad about like. Um, Military, because he he was in a, he was you know he was getting ready to retire at that time. He had been in the military. Um, no, no, he had already retired. He re- he retired for he was, but only for like a year. Yeah, he had been in the military for twenty three plus years. And at the time, I wanted to join the Marines. I didn't want if I was going to join a branch, I was going to join the Marines. Okay, you know because I'm like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the best. You know, yeah, the, yeah, the most macho branch. You know that whole thing. But my dad was like. You know, is that what you really want? Or are you doing it because of this, this and this? And he knew me like I, I you know, I kind of wanted to be a. Did he basically say like the image of what a Marine is versus no, like the was, reality? He was more he, he was more uh, let not me that I that, even know what that is. Yeah, he, well, but... he was let me know the reality of it. And that was he was like, I was in there 23 years, but I didn't get to see you guys all the time. I was away all the time and all these different things. And he knew I was the type that, you know, I was, a, I was, I was the more romantic of the three, even though now I'm the, now I'm the only one that's never been married. Um, <laughs> but, um, romance is dead. <laughs> yeah. But he was, he was just like painting a more realistic picture. Like he essentially yeah. talked me, talked me out of it. And I'm kind of glad he did. Um, because after doing the mall and knowing how gung ho I was doing unarmed mall security, Minimal training, you know, like we cherry picked some uh, martial arts disciplines and, that, and then we applied that. And I was I was working shootings, running towards gunmen with no vest, no pepper. Sp- I had yeah, pepper sp- just... no gun. So imagine if you it gave me adequate training and uh, gave me armor, like 
body armor body and, armor and, and, and helmets weapons. and stuff. Dude, I'd have been way too gung ho. I would have I would have been like, let's go. I would have been like, I would have tried to live this man boobed movie fantasy of a of a soldier, and I would have stepped on a landmine like second day. You would have and stepped a, on a Lululemon. A Lululemon would have got me, bro. I'd, <laughs> I'd have been pink mist, and I'd have been a folded flag in my parents' living room. Pink mist. That's what they call it. I know. I know. Yeah, this I, is, this a, is the, so fucking. It's the funniest and darkest term. Like, yeah. uh for, you know, Carlin had that great bit on friendly fire and all like all those words, but like, yeah, pink mist is just, yeah, funny. and it's, and that's Ooh. a that's a real like I I know now I've I've known so many guys in the military, a lot of Marines and stuff, people that were into shit, yeah, and that was <laughs> just hearing them throw pink mist around. And and just be like, that's a cutesy term. And then you find out what it is. You're like, holy Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm oh. like, and I've said to, I have had a lot of military friends uh, throughout my time. Because uh, San Diego is a military town. So it was a lot of people who had military stuff there. And I used to say to them all the time, like, I can't, I couldn't do this stuff. Like, I couldn't, Yeah. I couldn't be in the military. I'm like a real passive, I'm like real anti I'm not even like to philosophy. Like I just don't like violence and stuff. Yeah. And um, and they're like, oh yeah, you get trained and you don't even think about it, and you could just, you could just kill people. It's easy. Or just go back to your training. <laughs> and then they all had like pretty heavy drinking problems. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, wow. But it also like you get great benefits. So it's like I don't know yeah. modern military. I don't know how that goes. But the the old war stuff like world war two world war one all that stuff seems so um different than like what because right now yeah. we have it's very it seems a lot more advanced so yeah it's, then, it's super like, advanced now there's a lot more technology they're, they're trying to they're, terrifying they're, they're trying to wane out like human uh front lines and stuff as much as possible like so yeah, they're, they're going like, to like drones they're going to stuff. drones and stuff also in that time frame though like the that's the, the that era of soldier and every in military p- personnel uh kind of wrecked havoc on like let's say my dad yeah like the the uh the greatest generations like i think is what they called it um wrecked havoc on the baby boomers that joined the military because those guys were tough as nails but also they gave it all if they didn't die they came back all fucked up and they were like i'll just tough it out and so um it created this environment of like people after the generation after where they're like you know oh i don't you know i don't need to like instead of asking for help they're like i'll just tough it out yeah and so yeah so like uh, so that was the thing with like my pops when he passed away was um he spent his entire career trying to avoid the infirmary the the you know med bay yeah um stuff like that because there was a stigma you know, you're a put like so. These guys are having like legitimate injuries, and they're like, "Oh, that's you know, only pussies go to the fucking the the uh, the nurse's office or whatever." And so, yeah, you had these guys with all kinds of debilitating injuries, ailments, respiratory things, and they just were like, "I'll just tough it out." And so, what happens is when they retire, they don't have any medical records. Oh, to for, show for, that. For, oh, wow. for like their um, what do you call it? The VA claim stuff. And it's like, well, you didn't, you didn't, that wasn't during service. And then, so that's the thing that we're dealing with my dad with like a lot of his stuff was like, he didn't go to the, he didn't go to the, um, the clinic or whatever, the med bay, or whatever they call that mm-hmm. much. And so the like VA is trying to say, oh, this was this wasn't attributed to service. And it's like, yeah, but your VA site says all these different things like that right there says 50%, like yeah, VA claim or whatever. It's 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 basically it's it's a it's 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 that's the military version of it, but it's like the 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 civilian world is like your insurance doesn't want to uh the, like the hospitals doctors no one's no one's trying to cure anything yeah because healthy people don't make money right you know sick people do sick people need to constantly you know so if they that's why that's why I don't I I honestly think there's cures for literally everything but all those people have been snuffed out you know what I mean mm. it's um uh, it's like the Boeing thing you know the, no yeah are you familiar with that dude you want to uh, hear something crazy yeah um Kelly and I went to Charleston a bunch of years ago uh-huh. I took her there for her birthday yeah we did an oyster bar crawl 
Okay. Free idea, romantic, you know? Yeah. Oyster bar crawl. It's aphrodisiac, baby. Um, but we're down in Charleston, and so fun. Great, great drinks and food and stuff down there. But we hop in an Uber at one point, or a taxi, or whatever, the local guy, and he's complaining about how Boeing is trying to hire people locally. There's so many jobs at Boeing, yeah. but Boeing can't fill these jobs, and they don't have... Um, educated people to like fill the jobs they said like all the jobs that boeing's hiring like none of the people could work the machines right he was talking about all this stuff yeah and we're like this is nut who is this guy talking about and we're like boeing's local to charleston it's in like north charleston oh shit based there yeah because i'm like oh this guy's talking about like a local business boeing whatever <laughs> local business like it's an ice cream shop <laughs> <Yeah>. uh <laughs> but it so I was like, okay, whatever. And then all these years later, now <laughs> doors are falling off like mid-flight. Yeah. And windows are getting sucked out. You hear about and the I'm whistleblowers? Like, that dude was right about the machines. You hear about the whistleblowers? No. Oh, the the, the Boeing whistleblower. I know the parks guy in Florida, the whistleblower for the parks. Yeah. I thought they were going to build golf courses on our park, state no, parks. No, I didn't hear. What about that? What about that? The the guy who like blew the whistle on that yeah. plan got fired. Oh, he got fired. Well, Boeing, their firings are a little bit different when, they, when it comes to whistleblowers. They're killing uh, them? Yeah. They were found Ooh. dead. Yeah, dude. Yeah. it's a. It's I think f- Hewlett Packard did that just now, too. Yeah. But go on. What did? What, yeah, there, did there was a couple kill? whistleblowers. Well, one of the whistleblowers came out shortly after when that door popped off in, like, Portland or whatever, in Oregon somewhere. Yeah. And it landed in some dude's backyard. And then a whistleblower came out and... What's that red dot? No. <laughs> no. I didn't know you were Hindi. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and pink mist. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, get down. It's a Lululemon. <laughs> it's a Lululemon. <laughs> That's what's funny. I just realized I'm wearing my Lululemon shorts I got from like a thrift store. Oh, nice. Yeah. These are like $90 shorts I got for yeah. two bucks. Are they comfortable? Everyone yeah. I'm just deterring. I'm here. No, uh, the uh, the headpiece in my... Can you ear- see yeah. your balls through them? Like the, <laughs> the girl... Can't you? See through uh, girls' Lululemons. Uh, this right here. Wait, yeah, kinda... I mean, you have to show me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't my balls there, brother? <laughs> Marcus yeah. pulled it tight. Yeah. Um, I call that my band of brothers. Uh, <laughs> 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 a lot of tie-ins here. To, they take uh, a lot of fire. But no, they, there was a there was a whistleblower. Uh, the first one. And it came out right after that. And then next thing you know, whistleblower was found dead. How did he die? Like. Um, a, was yeah, mis- they were they were was trying they were trying to say it was a, no, it was trying to say it was like some fucking suicide thing, you know. <laughs> he committed suicide by shooting himself twice in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Instead, uh, forty-seven times. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, yeah. So there's so, that uh, the ga- the what's his name Gary Webb. Um, he's a journalist who uncovered like the Iran Contra scandal. Uh-huh. And they said he committed suicide. There's a lot of those cases. Oh yeah, There's where like of... people definitely didn't commit suicide, and they say they did. Yeah, yeah. And then, what do you do with that? You know, they're like he he committed suicide. He you know, I don't shooting know. himself twice. You have to is, go with it. That's what, the, that's what our lizard overlords want us to. Do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're just gonna be like. Also, Boeing's responsible for the fucking uh, space ki- uh, people that are trapped in space. Oh, they're in, yeah, they're that's still that was in their space. that was their craft. They're still in space. It's just they're gonna fight. They're gonna. Uh, land on the Nos- Nosferatu or whatever the alien spaceship. Oh yeah, the the, uh, the ne- what's it called? Something with an N. God, I wish I was. I'm. I'm. Like, I think it was like Nostradamus. No, no, no. It's something like that. No, Nost. No, I don't know. I know what you're talking about. Someone yeah. leave it in the comments and help us. Yeah, yeah. But alien starts that way. Stranded yeah. people, and then an alien comes up. Uh, it, it's. Could you imagine? Be how are they still alive? Do they, how do they get food? They had enough food to hang out that long. Um, do they prepare for like? Well, they have. They're like I, it's a Boeing ship. We're gonna pack extra supplies. Yeah, they got lots rashes. of trail mix. I don't know if you know the trail mix is handled They're well like, in the space. The cliff bars are getting lower down to banana peanut butter. The um, I like a cliff bar. No, I uh, well, I know when they go down to space. They for, first of all, they always have like. Um, they have extra canisters and things like that to, um, to convert like the the uh, the air in, into breathable oxygen. 
Oh. Or not, not just oxygen, but breathable air. Because, like, a lot of people don't realize this, but our air is not just oxygen. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like, nitrogen. And, like, it's like a whole blend of other gases. Yeah, yeah. Um, When you fart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Usually the air around me is full of methane. It's, um, I'm um, trying to... Nostromo. Uh, it's fart jokes. That's where you the get Nostromo. Flu, so. The what? N- the Nostromo. Nostromo, yes. Okay. Okay. I'm like... Kelly described me as having autism if it was a fuel tank. She said, you have autism, but it, your fuel tank is on empty. So it's just a little bit. <laughs> and uh, and it's like not enough to remember really detailed nerdy stuff. But like I, I enjoy the Alien franchise. Yeah. I've only seen Aliens 1 through 3, though. I've never seen any. And there's like three or four more. Oh, yeah. yeah. After that. It I gets. Um, I've seen them all, actually. Well, the no, new I saw Prometheus and I don't okay. know what to do with that. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. It's um, it's an origin story. Yeah. Um, it's so it's an interesting when you like when you pull back. It's like it's 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 an interesting sci fi movie because it's like, it's a sci fi movie that like tries to, that almost paints like, art of our intelligent design and, the theory of evolution mm-hmm. c- simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, cause they had those big things called the engineers. Uh huh. Yeah, those big know? white. So dudes. they were technically, God. You yeah, know? and then you know the 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 spores or whatever. Yeah, like the, the black gooey drinks. Yeah, the, drinks the black goo was like that's that's the primordial ooze technically. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting, but like, it, I I've seen all of them except the new one that's out in theaters. Um, I forgot what it's called, Alien something. Um, oh, um, something with an R. Yeah, because it, it's the name Romulus of the ship. Romulus or something. Romulus, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the name of the ship. Yeah. So uh, that one takes place after the first one, but before the second one. Okay. Yeah. And I, I just been, I've, I've been watching a lot of the second one. Like the aliens. It, yeah. yeah. So the first one, the first one, they, they, um, it was more of like a horror movie. Yeah. They were painting it like it was like a horror movie in space, essentially. The second it's one excellent. was. Huh? The first uh, alien is. Oh, it's an, fantastic. An excellent horror movie. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a fantastic. It's, it's so much suspense. And I, it's, it's, it's so it, much unknown, like the, the, the unknown element that they present, uh, with it is just amazing. But yeah, the second one is like, it's almost like Terminator two. It's like an action it's movie. A, well, it's, you know, well, it's, it's funny. Cameron, you said, yeah, it's James Cameron. Yeah. Um, but it was, I mean, it was, there was elements of the horror aspect, but it was more Isn't it awesome that James Cameron made aliens and Terminator two, but also Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like imagine he he carried the violence into Titanic. Oh, dude, that would have been pretty. He kind of did, man. Some people were getting I mean, off. Yeah, some yeah, people died like, in some fucked up ways that in that guy movie. Dings off the sh- <laughs> ship. You remember off the, the propeller? And he does that. Like, he does oh, like the, God. the triple sow cow into the. Ocean. Oh, the resonation of that noise. Like, yeah, oh. yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it, if he had like a cat that people bonded with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little girl in the air vents. Oh yeah. <laughs> The Some ice picks. Hard... The ice picks mostly come at night. Mostly, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> but that was such a good. I I love um, uh, Bill Paxton in uh, Alien. Yeah, yeah God, yeah. I love that. Well, I love the game over, man. What are we gonna do? Yeah, it, well, I think what made that movie so good, and what makes a lot of movies good, uh, regardless of the plot or or even the script or whatever, is if you have more than just the main character that you care about. I think that was the, that was the thing about Alien that um, and then Aliens was uh, so in the first Alien, Sigourney Weaver was kind of fairly unknown then. Yeah, the big star at the time was Tom Skerritt. He was the um, he was the like the captain. He was in the tunnels. Okay, he, he got he got taken out by the, like the jump scare alien. Yeah, yeah, that scene. So he was the main. He was like the main. He was the dude they were banking the the. Uh, he almost like Janet Lee in a Psycho, mm. or like the the lady in the shower, because she was the biggest star in that movie. Jamie Lee? No, no, Janet Lee. Janet Lee is a uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. Oh, yeah. And so in the movie Psycho, the lady gets killed in the shower. At the time, she was the biggest star in that whole movie, and oh. they were promoting the movie. Oh, fa- Psycho! In Psycho, but they did that. You said Janet Lee, and my oh. brain just oh, registered yeah. Halloween. You know? <laughs> no, but I mean, but that's that. Janet Lee in Psycho, that's Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. Oh, Halloween. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's her mom. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so 
they when they they promoted that movie, they were promoting Janet Lee, Janet Lee, and she literally gets fucking killed in the first five minutes. Psycho is fucking amazing. It, yeah. It's it is truly um, talk about building suspense. Yeah. Like uh, the time from her leaving the bank and then like. Like the shots and like looking, glancing in the rear view, yeah. the paranoia that it conveys, all of that is yeah. so, um, it's as good as any modern film. Like it watches like a modern uh, film. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, like there's like dialogue or whatever that people will feel old, but like um, that movie is incredible. Hitchcock in general, really yeah. great. Um, rear window has been like ripped off so much, so. Yeah, that, like, but that's a great one. And then you know, Vertigo, North by Northwest, and then Birds, Birds, yeah, Birds. And, and I, I, think, I remember the Disney. Remember the Disney Hitchcock experience thing. Mm-mm. I think it was Disney. It was some theme park did like a, might have been Disney Hitchcock like thing, and it it like went through a bunch of his movies, but it did, had a thing for Psycho, and it had the birds. It was like a three D. Oh, maybe. okay. See, I, I, my thing is, like, there was a lot of things in Disney that I didn't really know about. Yeah. Because, like, our, my family, we didn't go to Disney. We didn't go to, you know. We yeah. went to We went to, like, well, Disney didn't have a lot of th- ro- uh, thrill rides. And they were expensive. So we went to, like, cheaper parks that had roller coasters. Mm. So I didn't do a lot of these, like. We did those, too. Yeah. I didn't do a lot of Disney well, stuff. Yeah, did you have, the- like, local, um places with like roller coasters and it's like rickety metal and stuff because i mean had, we had like we had a lot of this we had traveling county fair things oh yeah, yeah. even yeah the county fair was like our disney you know, like yeah, yeah redneck disney dude like white trash we gotta disney. drill into like our growing up lives yeah we should do an episode on that yeah i mean yeah it's it's um i, I talk about that a lot more now in my stand-up is like just trying to like because I, I i i you know lots of times you don't realize if things are unusual until you tell people about it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit, I was just living. Or you think something's unusual and then you talk to people and you're like, oh, it's, it's very common. Yeah. Uh, like, that's a good point. Like, like uh, for example, I, when I was younger, I was, I was a late bedwetter. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo. And all this. No, shit. I was too. Yeah. See, it's, it's a, so I have a funny, I actually wrote a bit about a thing uh, that, because my, I felt like my, well, go on. Do you have more? Oh no no! I mean but that was that was like a big one for me. Yeah. I was like I was like it was like this, this dirty secret that I didn't want to tell anybody, even that he knew. Like when I went to school, they're like someone smells like piss. <laughs> someone stinks. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. Oh no, I did. It was just it, it's just when you when you pee, like it seeps in your skin. Yeah, yeah. And I, I and I probably wasn't the best at like wearing deodorant in those days. Yeah, yeah. So it was just yeah, and then yeah, it was. Yeah, not a not a We've good situation. We've all come a long way, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> but at that time, I thought I was like, I'm just the only freak that's still this age, fucking, you know. And yeah. then I then I look at it later in life, I, I start mentioning it, you know, because it's yeah, it's no longer my life. Yeah. And then people are like, Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. I'm like, What the fuck? Yeah. And yeah. so there's there's things like that, and then there's other things where it's like, mm, That's not that's not normal. That's not, you, you probably got to go to therapy for that, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah, we had I yeah I was like a late bedwet. I don't know how late, but I, it was. I remember at one point my parents like uh, got some kind of like uh, thing where it was like uh, it was almost like an electric fence, and it like went under your sh- under your sheet. Uh huh. And like if you pissed on it, it would set off an alarm. It was like, you know. And it would like wake I you up. I didn't have this, but a friend of mine does. Uh, he talks about late bed running in his stand up. Oh, and yeah. his family bought one of those. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's and then and they this family said that we were gonna buy you something else, like a nicer gift, but you won't stop wetting the bed. So it's like, well, you know, it was either getting a, a brand new Nintendo, uh, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. or the uh, Pissatron nine thousand yeah, yeah. or something That's like that. That's the would make like this. Uh, but I, I was a huge uh, Red and Stimpy fan, and it was uh, the song Don't Whiz on the Electric Fence. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's what I always used to think of. Oh, that's funny. But I don't remember having that long, and I remember it must have worked real fast because I don't remember having it long, and I remember stopping. And so I guess it worked. Yeah. It, it, for me, it was weird. It was, it was, I, I, I went to bed for way too long. You know, like I remember. What about like? Well, I remember getting my driver's license and then finally stopped wetting the bed. See, I stopped wetting I was, the I bed. Was 
<laughs> so, so you're like you're like 18, 18 yeah, yeah, yeah. and a half. Uh, yeah. I stopped wet in bed for a long time, and then I started drinking. Oh yeah, and then sometimes you get too tr- too drunk, and you'll piss yourself while you sleep. Yeah, the 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 few times in my adult life where I pissed myself was, I would I would have very vivid dreams. Yeah, and in the dream I'm pissing. Yeah, I'm yeah, at yeah, it, yeah. And it. Like in the dream I'm pissing, and I'm like just I I remember this happened. I want to say maybe a year or two ago, where um. I think I, I think I did edibles or something like that, mm. and it knocked me the fuck out. And um, I had this dream where I'm literally running, I'm running through this building, and I'm, every bathroom I'm finding is locked. Oh no! And I finally find one, and I just piss, and then I wake up, and my bed is fucking wet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like it woke me up, and I'm like, oh, and I'm like mid piss. Yeah. And I'm like, it's already like, oh, that's great awful. in the dream. Yeah, it's oh man, it was so relieving. <clears throat> and then I woke up, and I'm like, what the? Oh my god, I'm fucking <laughs> way too old for this. Or am I getting to that point in my life where, I'm, like, for, for you know, when you get older, you're you have incontinence and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's already started. What the fuck? What you know? the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> dude, it was wild. Yeah, I uh, was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's so that's funny. Yeah, I one time I got drunk. Uh, my sister, I had an older sister, and she would have like house parties, like people, her friends over. Yeah. So sometimes instead of going out with my friends, I would just stay at the house. And they thought it was like fun to get me drunk. Yeah. So it'd be like I'd be like fifteen, and they'd be like eighteen, <laughs> and uh, and I'd just sit and I would drink like twelve Coronas. Holy you shit! Know? And I would just be smashed, and uh, they just thought it was funny, you know. So it was like, <laughs> but I remember one time we did that, and uh, we they like I don't know they really went to bed or whatever, but I went into my kitchen, I found. A bag. It was spicy nacho Doritos, and this is the last time I ate them. And I think I ate pretty much the whole bag. And yeah. I went to bed, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I threw up. And it was just a big spicy nacho Dorito oh my in God. my bed. Oh, it was like terrible. a big triangle of yeah, throw big, up. Like, yeah, oh, like, but God. it was like the same color. Oh God! And it had like that like. <clears throat> I love spicy food and everything, and like I'm sure they're great, but I just can't bring myself back there. Yeah, that smell brings me right back to that bed. You know? Oh God, yeah, it's rough. Yeah, I, I honestly with vomit, that's the thing that gets everyone is. Yeah, because uh, I remember working at Walgreens, and they told us a little trick when like someone threw up, one of us has to clean it up. You know, uh-huh. so I was like, oh man, and one of my coworkers uh, took one of those like. The, you know the mask that everyone was wearing during lockdown. Oh yeah, sprayed a little spritz of like uh, like a very light perfume, and they're like you know where it wasn't too overwhelming when you actually could breathe, but it's like put this on and now 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 clean it, and I was like oh god it's just gross to look at but this it's gross to look at I didn't want it touching me my my skin yeah but it was I think it's between it being gross and then the smell there's like the very strong ammonia oh yeah smell. And uh, that's usually what, what makes other people vomit. And so they said if you eliminate the smell portion, the physical stuff, as long as it doesn't touch you, and you're not grossed out by the visual aspect. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I just did that. I I was able to power through, clean up some disgusting fucking shit. Man. Oh, I bet. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a good, I mean, that's a good trick. I saw puke on the ground walking around in St. Augustine this weekend. Nice. We're walking to get coffee and someone puked. It was a big old pile. Oh, God. It was uh, so we were down there all weekend, and it's, it was a holiday weekend. But it was like seems like a lot of South Florida, like Miami type people. I wonder when they go back to school because, like, I know all like not not every uh, county and stuff goes or uh, city and stuff goes back at the same time. Oh yeah. So some of them are like, I know, like, and it's like the, it, even in the same city, like pr- public school and private school. Yeah, like some like the public schools will go back the week before, and then the private school will go, or vice versa, and stuff like that. Mm. Um, what was it? What was the gnarliest time you were puked? I have a very distinct story. <laughs> uh, um, I have a uh, the gnarliest time probably. So one time I threw I I've thrown up uh, from drinking many 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 times. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think I just throw up a lot easy or whatever. But um. 
<laughs> so one time we're in St. Augustine, Dunes Cracker, which is a bar. I don't yeah. know if it's still there or still open or whatever, but it was St. Augustine Beach. And they used to do this thing where it was a uh, happy half hour and it was free drinks for 30 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> what the right. Fuck? Yeah. They're, pro- they're, like not, six they're to, not in business. Anymore. Six to six thirty or whatever. Oh my God. Free drinks. And so we were poor. Right? I lived in St. Augustine with one of my best friends from New York who yeah. went to Flagler and I lived there for a summer and we had, no, I had no money. And, so free drinks were like, let's just go take advantage. So we used to go and just try to, we'd be like, we'd tip the bartenders some money. Yeah. So we'd be like, can I have three Jack and Cokes, you know? So, and then you'd sit there and just try to drink and we'd try to up and up and up. And I drank nine Jack and Cokes one time, but it was like. In a half hour? In a half hour. Holy I fuck. ordered them. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, I ordered them within a half hour. I think I drank them within whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was like. Uh, and it's like the you know plastic cups. It's not like a pint glass of Jack and Coke. It's yeah, like yeah. an eight ounce drink, or whatever. But I I drank, I housed all of those, and then um, I got to the last one. I was like sipping to the bottom of the ice, and then just puked. All over. Oh my god! So that that was bad. But <clears throat> probably the gnarliest one was I puked outside my frat house in college, and it like stained the concrete. And uh, oh, God. so like left like a permanent scar. On the what ground. are you like a fly? You're like a fly. <laughs> Just cover things in vomit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Uh, mine was. Um, so at one particular point, my dad was stationed in like uh, uh, Mississippi. Oh. And so um, he would actually on on weekends when he was like had like free time he would drive back to jacksville just for the weekend and then come drive back mm. to mississippi so one time my mom was like nah let's let's do the opposite let's go you yeah, know we'll, we'll stay on base and and then uh we can actually spend a little bit more time with him because it, he'll, you know so my mom's driving we stop at mcdonald's and i you know a little fat fucking kid you know so i was like i was like i want oh, you were young well, I was like thirteen. Okay, but I mean, I I had an appetite, dude. Yeah, um, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so I, I, dude, I, uh, coming into your own as a fat kid, oh god, uh, is just a wonderful thing. Yeah, it was. Um, went to McDonald's and like, and of course they had like a special too, like uh, on breakfast sandwich or something. So I was like, I think I, I think I ate three, I think I had three uh, sausage egg and cheese biscuits or oh, something damn. like that. Uh, That's- and then, Orange juice, a soda, um, <laughs> three hash browns. Dude, I had a lot of food. It was a, it was a lot. And um, McDonald's biscuits are good. And Underrated. Then, then I think we we stopped at a, a gas station and had a chocolate milk. Oh, so that'll do it. I had orange juice, soda, th- all that buffet of breakfast. Yeah, and then a Soaked chocolate into milk. All that biscuit. And then we're driving, and I'm I know I, I remember having a wrestling magazine. I'm reading a re- I'm just, so they always said like. People who read in a car, like you can get sick, motion yeah. sickness. Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe that's what happened. I mean, or the I don't know the cornucopia of dog <laughs> shit gonna, that's in my stomach. I'm gonna blame the chocolate milk. And it, we were we were <laughs> the I chocolate think, milk floater. The dro- yeah yeah chocolate yeah orange <laughs> juice. I had a white trash mimosa in yeah, my yeah. stomach. <laughs> fucking um, so we're we're driving through Mobile, Alabama, uh-huh. and uh, there, there's like I don't know if you ever drove through there I've on I-10. Heard. So I want to um, go though. I've there's like a things. there's like where at one point it takes you under a, like a tunnel. They actually a drive under the river, one of the rivers. Oh okay. Yeah, and then on the outside, then it was like a, a traffic backup. So at it was like the worst time. Like mom, mom, I'm not feeling too good, and she's like, "But Marcus, we 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 can't. I literally can't pull over anywhere." I'm like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I fucking <laughs> I fucking exorcist hurled from the back seat onto the dashboard like oh. i mean i mean shot over yeah the fucking uh the middle console building. <laughs> oh my god there was, i remember there was like a little puerto rico flag that, yeah, my, yeah. that we had in their car and I, I i hit it and it was like swinging <laughs> and symbolic dude my fucking mom was so mad because we like once we got through that but we had to sit in that Oh, for, no. for, during a traffic jam, just yeah, vomit everywhere. It's smelling the car. Oh, God. my brother and sister are like, oh my god. For, my sister's like, it's good. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. And my mom's like, you better not fucking throw up. You know, just like <laughs> my mom's like, just, just white knuckling the whole time. 
And then we, I, re- I forgot where he pulled over. And uh, I remember, I think there was like this old, old country guy that came in to help us or something like that. And um, he had like baby powder. He had mm. baby powder in his car. And uh, he helped uh, my mom like get the throw up off of there and like pour baby powder on it. Oh, really? Like and, and he was telling her like things to do to help clean it up and stuff. And then uh, I remember just my mom, <laughs> it was like Chris Farley and Billy Madison. You ever like I'll turn this damn bus around? You're depressing. <laughs> like just that level of fear, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, f- uh, furiousness. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, and yeah. So any time after that, for like the next two, three years, it was like, um, don't give Marcus, don't let Marcus drink orange juice. <laughs> that, like because they, they, everyone kept thinking it was God, well, I think, McDonald's I, orange well, juice is awesome too. But it was, I think, it was because of the How color, the color flavor. of it was very like orange. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, God, yeah. that's tough. I met one of my best friends at a Sweet 16 doing a, a vomit prank where we were like, we were on a, it was like a venue, whatever, but it was outside of it was a boardwalk yeah. by a beach. And so we took, um, the prank was we would just stand around on the boardwalk and wait for girls to walk by yeah. and we'd start a conversation with them. But we both had pint glasses of ice water and the trick was whoever started talking, the other one would take a sip and hold the water in their mouth. And um, the other one would talk and introduce the other person. And the idea was to have the conversation go for about a minute. And as the minute goes on, the person who drank the water and is holding it in their mouth starts to look progressively sicker, like they're going to get sick. Yeah. And then after like, uh, you know, a minute, 35, you know, 30 seconds of a minute of conversation. Yeah. That person with the water would just try to do the funniest looking like I just got sick and threw up all over the place. <laughs> and we did it for like the entire it was like a sweet 16. You know? OK. And uh, <laughs> that was that was fun. Puking's great. Puking, yeah. puking typically um, if you're not like completely blackout drunk a lot. Sometimes puking will bring you right back into the game. Yeah. You know, so that's good. I've I've, I've um... but it's not good. But, like in your situation when you're stuck in a place where you can't puke or get oh, no, away no, fuck that. No, because it's, it's just ruined it, it the tough. smell of it is just devastating yeah it was right it was a very pungent fucking vomit uh puking sometimes like i've done this also being a fat kid where i ate like like you know how some people go to the gym and they work out to failure well i was like yeah. that but at, at buffets like i would yeah, work, yeah. I, would, I would eat to failure eat failure yeah and um there was nothing. There was there was not many better feelings at the time than having like where you're like so stuffed where you like moving is uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And then you're just like, <laughs> and then next day you know you're like, you know what? I feel fucking good. I think I can run around the block. You know, like, it's like, oh god. I knew this. I knew like a professional fat kid in high school, and um, he used to like uh, he used people used to buy him um food to eat like as you know eating challenges yeah he'd be like we dare you to eat this and he would just do it but he was like as long as you buy it yeah you know which looking back is probably like a poor thing but uh which is kind of sad (laughs) but one time they did like mcdonald's came out with um the 20 piece mcnuggets for five dollars or whatever it was yeah i remember that and so someone was (laughs) like we're gonna we're gonna bring you to mcdonald's and we're gonna see how many mcnuggets you could eat and we'll pay for them and I wasn't in the screw. I wasn't there, but this is legend. Uh, and they brought him, and they kept buying him boxes. And he ate eighty-seven McNuggets. Never had that many. I've had sixty. Sixty? Yeah. Wow. Had sixty. I bought three, three twenty pieces. I don't think. I, I wonder how many I could do because I. I mean, I going into that, you know, especially at this point of our lives, like that's going to put you down for like a full day. Oh, at this point in my life, yeah. I, I, I mean, just go ahead and just get my uh, gravestone ready. <laughs> I'm like, that's eighty. Or so this was a lot, you were a lot younger when you. Oh did yeah, 16? I was like, it's like fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. yeah. I and I told, only... and I, and I, um, I came very close to throwing up. Uh, well, because I had two sodas, no, two sweet teas, two sweet oh. teas, two sweet teas. <laughs> you love to pile on the beverage. So. Oh yeah, well, I'm I, the same I, way. I'm, a, I love a beverage. I can't, I can't eat food dry. Yeah, which is weird because when my mom always tells me when like she was pregnant with me, like any time she would eat, she couldn't have any liquid with it. I, no. I would make her throw up. You're making up for lost time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, ah, yeah. I uh, no, now I'm the same way. I'm like, uh, I like it. I'm a idealist when it comes to food. So if 
if you have food, like a, having a drink with it is better than not, you know? Yeah. So I opt for that. Well, it also, I drink a lot of water now and it helps with digestion. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, I just, I just, I just have to, like, also, I think, I think another reason why I've learned to drink a lot of water with my meals is there would be a lot of times where we would get invited to people's houses and they would cook us dinner. And I got accustomed to how my mom cooks and, you know, you know, more seasonings and, you know, things like that. And sometimes I go to someone's house and their food's very bland. Yeah. So water or or a Coke or something like a sweet tea. They're like, oh, you're very thirsty. I'm like, no, I'm just I need this to power down this dry ass <laughs> chicken, dude. This, this, this hospital just, food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I that was that was another thing is I, I use it. So, you know, in those situations, I, I remember I had like a. A, a girl I was seeing that like made me food and it was like not good. Mm, that's but, rough. Yeah, but I, you know, I still wanted to fuck. Uh, so I was just like, "This is delicious." <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a bit of that in my um, in my marriage here. Uh, not, and I've brought Kelly along, but like, I am, I eat food like where I want the most concentrated flavor in something. Yeah. And also an authentic experience, but like the most flavor you could pack into it, including heat and like, I want to, I want, I want every bite to be like insane, you know? Yeah. And, um, and like Southern, uh, so a lot of Southern food is like you said, it's pretty bland. Yeah. And then, um, uh, so it's an interesting thing, but, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, a lot of, well, the, I think the problem it's a is battle that, back and forth, you know, I think the problem with a lot of Southern cooking is a lot of Southern cooking is based off poverty cooking. Right, yeah. So re, it's yeah, like, like um, certain things. Cheap and ingredients taste Cheap good. ingredients and, and what's readily available, which usually was just like salt. Yeah. Salt and, and pepper, but not, no like like spicy pepper. Yeah, no other seasoning to go. Yeah, yeah, just like regular. Yeah. Or like, I know, yeah. It's just, it's interesting. But then again, like, um, like when I first started dating uh uh, Kelly, we, she would make like a Midwestern thing like that I've never had. Yeah. And it would be like so opposite in the other direction of stuff that I would eat. Yeah. So that would be, you know, it's a good, it's a good, it's fun to try. But yeah. Yeah. I'm always like, let's go to this hole in the wall ethnic. Well, I always yeah. find it funny when people find out that I'm like uh, Puerto Rican and Filipino. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're like, uh, well, you don't, you don't like spices? I'm like. Have you looked at Filipino and yeah, Puerto Rican never, cuisine? I, I know. Like, uh, it's generally it's it's more savory. Mm-hmm. It's, there's savory and stuff like that, but it's not it's not spicy. Yeah. Like other Asian cultures, like Vietnamese and uh, and Thai, uh, Taiwanese food, like that's that's full of uh, or uh, Thai. Is Taiwan 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 and well, Taiwanese? No, 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 Taiwan is. Well, what are what are we can get? We can, what are people from Thailand? We will get from? views based on just saying the completing this sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taiwan exists. I know Taiwan exists, <laughs> but what are what are Thai food? Huh? Is what you're trying to no, say? No, no. But what are the people called? What what like Thai t- from well, Thailand? The 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 Communist Party of China would say it, they're Chinese, oh and then the God. Taiwanese would say they're Taiwanese. Well, Taiwan's a different We're country. demonetized. There <laughs> you go. There goes the no, 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 no. But my thing Bring is, like, the when I was lights. looking it up, what are people from Thailand called? Thai. Just Thai? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, the Thai food. Uh, I, mean, I get Thai food, oh, but now I, we didn't, I didn't even know have I, to go into Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big problem. Okay. Uh, I guess I don't. Okay. Know. I don't know much about but it. Like I know Thai, more about Thai, Thai food. food. Um, I know more about Thai Vietnamese food. Than food. Um, even even like Korean food. Yeah. Spice. There's a lot yeah, of spice. Got spice. And then when it comes to Spanish cultures, there's like Mexican and um, well, Mexicans do spice. There, I've heard Mexicans are like the main people who add spice to things in the Central American. Uh, you know your people. Yeah. All that area, because I have uh, South Florida, when I go down there once in a while, they'll tell me all about their, it's all ripe with like Puerto Rican culture and yeah. Cuban culture and all those cultures. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm the same way. I'm like, why isn't anything spicy? You know? Yeah. And they're like, that's only Mexican food. Yeah. And I'm like, well, take me to Mexico. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, like, like Puerto Rican food, Cuban food, uh, even even um, 
like South American, a lot of a South American yeah. food. Um, well, I was looking. I'm going to see my parents in like a week, and they're, where they're staying at the hotel right up the street is like a Colombian steakhouse or like some kind of like Ecuadorian, yeah. Venezuelan something. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this looks awesome because it just looks so different. But yeah. I'm like, I don't even know how to pitch that to them. Yeah. So I'm like, do you want to go eat fried pork belly in a, <laughs> in a smoky? Yeah, I don't know, but it would be good, man. Yeah, I love I love a I love a little place. Now I want some pho. Yeah, yeah, I love that stuff so much. I know. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I want to go back to um. Uh, what we call it? I gotta go back. I want to go back and get Thai food soon. Yeah. Do you get? To, do you like Thai food? Yeah, there's a couple of places near me that are pretty good. Yeah, uh, one of them. Is, one of them is like a more mom and pop called Thai Blossom Bistro. Uh huh. And they're kind of a they're sort of a fusion place though. They have it's mostly Thai food, but they also have like lumpia. They also have mm. uh, pho. They have like they cover a lot of uh, Asian bases. Yeah, but they're I mean their Thai food's good. Um, I like uh, I like Thai curry, Penang curry, and all that. Yeah, That's yeah. We went good. to didn't we go to a uh, like a curry place that had like. That was Japanese curry. curry. Oh, Japanese curry. Okay. The only it's well, the little paper sign in there says the only uh, the only like proper Japanese curry house in the southeast. Oh, okay. Isn't that weird? And it's just up the street. Yeah, in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, in a in a strip mall that's mostly closed down. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but anyway, yeah, the food there was good. I would I would go back and I want to try. I got a brothy thing. I would want to try like. A more saucy number yeah um but i you know it's hard to f- fight with there's this japanese restaurant it's a sushi place it's mostly but they have food too hannah moon up the street oh, okay and that place is amazing it's so funny that i'm into soups now uh because for years soups to me reminded me of vomit you mentioned that yeah, yeah. it reminded me of like you ever you ever watch the toddler drink, eat snacks, and then drink out of a bottle? Yeah, yeah. And then it, it soups just reminded me of backwash water from a toddler. Oh, okay. It's like it's it's liquid, but with a bunch of chunks of shit that shouldn't be in it. That's funny. <laughs> Soup is yeah. incredible if it's ma- if it's well made and f- and like we said, if you layer flavor on it, you yeah. Know, if you really like build flavor. Throughout the making of soup. Yeah. I mean, you can make stuff that every single bite is like life changing. Yeah. You know, like you, especially like when you go to like a really good ramen or like a, a pho place or yeah, any kind of place that spends like hours and hours on their broth. Yeah. Um, man, you taste that. It's so good. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I like, I'm like, like, uh. I've been to a handful of good ones. I don't seek it out as much. I always go for like sushi or Thai. But yeah, I'm bound and determined to have try every pho place in Jacksonville. Oh, I, yeah, I, I I think of in that particular ass uh, side of like Murray Hill side of the West Side. I've had like every every Thai place. There. Okay, I mean every uh, Vietnamese place there. I got a little place that's supposed to be really good um, over here. Yeah, that I'll take you to. See, I got yeah, I got to I got to start venturing over this side uh, near my house. I've had pretty much every place there. Mm-hmm. So there's two sides of town now that have already covered all bases. OK, I'm, I'm, yeah. Do you have a standout favorite so far? Um, One of my favorites is is real close to my place. Oh, good. It's like like three miles away. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's a uh, what well, they, they also they have really good pho, but they also have uh, bon mi sandwiches. Oh, God. Bon mi. Is yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It's yeah, a, I I love a bon mi. Yeah, it's called like Paris bon mi or something like that. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that a chain? I went to one. I don't in know. Pa- I, I went to be. one in Tampa, and I thought oh, okay. I, was, I thought that was the name of it. Yeah, they they have really good desserts and stuff too. Like, yeah, it's just like, oh man, that's. Uh, I love a bon mi. It's great. It's like um, Vietnamese with that. Like, have you ever had Vietnamese coffee? No. Oh, dude, do you like coffee? Yeah, not so. I've, I've this this a thought of Vietnamese coffee sounds like I'm gonna be shitting. <laughs> yeah, you will. Um, 
What they do is they put a, a coffee cup and they put condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk, uh-huh. in the bottom of it, and then they have a little metal contraption and they put coffee in there and they do like pour over. So you you know pour over coffee in like a hipster coffee shop. They no. do like a, you know. No. Um, this is all new to me, dude. Okay. Uh, if you if you ever want to pay like seven dollars for a cup of coffee. That's probably why I don't go there. Yeah, I don't coffee. <laughs> and they'll do like good coffee beans and they'll grind them. Yeah. And then they put them in a little paper thing and then they put them on a funnel essentially. And they pour hot water over it like little by little, just a little bit. Yeah. And it will like bloom the coffee up and then they pour it over and then it just the water and gravity pull everything like down the funnel and it brews like a nice, oh, a nice okay. cup of coffee. But it takes... A few minutes, and it yeah. takes like someone to sit there and like, do you know, yeah, top it, yeah, and it's obnoxious. And if there are people in line, you should never order that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so this you kind of do it yourself at a, at your table, but it it drips down onto the sweetened condensed milk, and so you get a little cup of coffee when it's done, and you mix it up, and it's like real sweet. It's almost like a sweet espresso. Oh, okay, kind of I, it's I, really I, good. I, I gotta try that. Yeah. I, I I like sweeter coffees. Okay, well, like, no, this I don't is like, like bitter. I'm not a big. No, this guy. is like. I mean, the coffee itself is usually not the best, but this yeah. method, like putting sweetened condensed milk, which I think in anything is probably pretty good. Yeah, it seems like it. I don't know. Yeah. Also, weird thing is, I don't. I'm not a big fan of hot coffees. Okay. I like I like cold cold coffees. I I don't mind cold brew. Mm-hmm. I'll sweeten it up and stuff, but like, I don't know. Uh, what about espresso, like a a little one? Yeah, not so. Not, I mean, yeah, not uh, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not a like I said. I I I don't like hot chocolate. I wait till it cools down. Like fu- like soups are the only thing I only liquids that I eat hot. Oh wow! Like 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 chicken noodle soup stuff. Like that. I just don't like. What about like, food like a burger? You know, like you're biting into a burger and it's real hot. Oh, I don't mind that, but yeah. even then, I like I have to like if it's too hot, if it bur- if I feel it burning. Well, me, yeah, you don't want to burn yourself. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so yeah, an aversion to hot liquid. Soup is is soup is incredibly good and uh, really cheap to make. Real big batches too. Yeah, you could like <clears throat> it's one of the and it's um it's so easy because it's all in one pot. There's so many. Ba- there's so much going for soup. Also, if you have a slow cooker, you could forego all of that and just dump a bunch of stuff in there and hit a button and leave. And then it turns into soup. Oh, like shit. chili. Yeah. Or in it, whatever you mm. want. This episode's making me hungry. <laughs> you don't like chili, right? Do I not remember really. That right? no, no, okay. Not chili. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite type of soup? Pho? A, uh, an pho, Asian soup? Chicken noodle soup. You ever have tum yum soup from no. a Thai place? Mm-mm. It's yeah, Thai but... sweet and sour soup. Okay. Um, tum yum, uh, and it's so good. Uh, Check that out. I like um, I like chowders, like clam chowder. Oh yeah. Um, conch chow, uh, conch conch uh, chowder. We had um, um, I don't know if I ever told you this. One time we went to Cedar Key, uh, and we went to this place, and it was like the middle of August. It was a million degrees. Yeah. But everyone was in this bar <laughs> was eating soup. Oh what? And we were like. It's so hot. Why is everyone eating soup? And we're like, this soup must be great. And then on the menu, it's like famous soup, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, try our half and half. So what they would do is do a bowl, and they would do clam chowder in it. Yeah. And then they had the uh, Mallorcan like, uh, conch chowder, which was tomato-based, a red. Yeah. And so they would do a bowl with half white and half red, half conch and half uh yeah okay and like so you'd eat it and you could do like just eat from one side or just eat the other or mix them and yeah it was fucking oh my god i've had uh phenomenal you gotta try that i had a uh, mallorcan conch chowder i was in a okay uh, yeah isla la Mirada. i love i love la Mirada. i can't yeah. say it for some reason isla Mirada, you got it i can't yeah it's, it's weird uh i was doing a, a show there and uh the the place uh that uh was hosting the show whatever they put us up in this like, like almost like a, almost like a, like a studio or a, like a one bedroom apartment thing, uh-huh. where some of the staff lives. It's interesting, and then it's at a like where we perform. There's like two places. There's like a like an upscale restaurant, and then like a, a like almost like a sports bar. Yeah, and he, he goes, you got to come back in the morning and try the food at the the restaurant, the actual restaurant, and um, 
it's a bunch of Caribbean dudes in the kitchen making mm. Caribbean food. Oh my god! And it's like, yeah, he and he's like, what? He was like, you like you like chowder, man? You know, I was like, yeah, and, and he made me this, and it, that's what it was. It was a Mallorcan clam, ch- I mean, uh, a conch chowder because oh, it was a tomato based one. Yeah, tomato based. It had so a little good. kick to it. Had yeah, a little kick yeah. To it. Mm-hmm. God, that stuff is amazing. Oh yeah, it was solid. It was. Um, we got to do a an episode just making a soup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it should be, it would be called philosophy. <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we could I think we could end on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good enough time. Oh, yeah, Anything dude. uh it's not cool to be blown up by a Lululemon. <laughs> uh, but it is cool to be foolish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>